suddenly before you, a large misshapen blade comes crashing into your shield, sending you staggering back a few feet, but not to the ground. What do you do? Indeed, it's become popular with children anywhere from grammar school on up. Not so with a lot of adults who think it's been connected to a number of suicides and murders. You swing your sword high and thrust it into your foe, sending them flying back. The one behind you attempts to come around and perform a sneak attack. And there are those who are fearful that the game in the hands of vulnerable kids could do harm. And there is evidence that seems to support that view. Uh, okay. Um, barely missing as you dodge out of the way and counter with a slash of your own. Your next hit takes out the hulking figure. They look up at you and speak in a language that you're unfamiliar with, but... Damien, you seem to understand it just fine. Timothy Grice, 21, shotgun suicide. The detective report noted D&D became a reality. The guttural language rings in your ear as you try to place it. Yes, it is orcish. Irving Bank Pullen, 16, an avid D&D player, a suicide. With a swift slice, you separate your foe's head from their body, leaving the three of you surrounded by these lifeless forms. Daniel and Stephen Irwin, 16 and 12, a murder and a suicide. The police said they were obsessed with the game. You take a few moments and gather your surroundings and begin to search the bodies. Uh, you find a total of three gold pieces and a note. Jeffrey Jacklevich, 14. Stephen Wyakano, 16. Michael Dempsey, 17. And the list goes on. The note reads, Head to the mountain town of Vidal. Here the non-believers shall fall. Mrs. Pulling, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. I am so sorry for your loss. Uh, truly, I am. Would you care for a cup of coffee? If there's anything that I can do to right this wrong, please don't hesitate to ask. I think we both know I can't do that, Mrs. Pulling. Again, I am so sorry for your loss, but please understand that this isn't my fault. You can devote your whole life to destroying this game that you see fit to blame, but please, if you could find it within yourself, understand that this isn't my fault. I didn't make the gun that shot your son. He just played my board game. If that's how you truly feel, I'll see you in court, Mrs. Pulling. The three of you come upon the city gates. The faint smell of burning embers and the warmth of the earth set an uneasy feeling in all of you. If you'd like to make a spot check, you can roll a percentile dice for me, please. Okay. Uh, Orum. While the other two are distracted, you watch as a young girl rushes towards Damien with a blade in her hands. What do you do? Roll for that, please. Let's say dexterity. Okay. With as much effort as you can muster, you tackle the young girl, bringing her to the ground as she digs this dagger deep into your gut. You take four points of damage as she just wails. Are you sure you want to do that? Okay. Uh, you hold her tighter. She continues to dig this dagger deeper into you, tears streaming down the sides of her face as she wails for her mother. She listens to you, the tears still streaming down the side 
as she begins to weave this tale of how this orc tribe has ravaged her home, her family. The whole time, Damien, she looks at you. Yes, because he is half orc. And sure. Uh, um, you separate yourself from the group and walk towards the town. As you enter, you see all these survivors look on at you in fear. These broken families cling to one another for safety. Why do you feel bad? It's not your fault. It's merely coincidence that you're half work. That's a wrap! Really great session, guys. I'm excited to see where you take all of this. Uh, no, no, no you, you have not leveled up yet, okay? Uh, well, what did the young girl say? Something about the bridge. Yes, thank you. Uh, it, home's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Um, how about you guys? Actually, I'm, I'm surprised as well. You'd think with how much hate we're getting on the news that people wouldn't want to play the game, but we've nearly doubled in profits. It's amazing. I'm really glad to see something good come out of all this. No, no, I have to take care of some stuff here before my next meeting, but I'll see you guys next week, okay? Bye. Thank you so much for stopping by again. Do you mind if I call you Patricia? Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Pulling. Um, you said on the phone that you had something you wanted to show me? What's all this? Why, why do you have all these letters? No, actually, I, I'd rather not. I'd, I, they're just words. They have nothing to do with me. Mrs. Pulling, please, I... Mrs. Pulling, I... No, I... It, which one's your son's? Which one of these is Irving's? I think it's time for you to go, Mrs. Pulling. I think you need to leave. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Okay, Aura, so you're going to go and talk to the townspeople. All right, uh, Damien, what are you going to do? Okay, it, it takes you about 15 minutes, but you find her. She's sitting at the edge of the ravine, holding on to one of the supports for the bridge. 
As you walk closer, she turns and sees you. You can tell that she's unsettled by your presence. You sit down. She shifts slightly away from you and continues to look straight out into the distance. Why are you here? No, why are you here? I miss my brother. You can't fix that. Your friend tried telling me that you're not a bad guy, but you're one of them. You show her the note. She asks you to translate the text, and as you read aloud, her eyes just widen. And she turns back to the ravine. My mama once said that the people aren't always going to like you. So sometimes you have to do what you can to make them like you. And I'm sorry. Great session, everyone! I mean, really, really good job out there and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been sleeping. Why do you ask? No, no, it's just, um... Actually, um... Does any of this make sense to you guys? Like, what, what we're doing here, does, does any of this make sense? I mean, like... Do any of you want to kill yourselves? Because I do. One of the moms uh, dropped off a box full of letters, and I just feel so bad about it all. Like, there's nothing I can do. I, I know it's not my fault, but what if it is? What if these kids aren't doing so well and the game's just showing them that? Of course I read them all. They all talk about the same thing. They all feel so alone, like they have nowhere to be. I can't stand the thought of them feeling like that. No, guys, I promise, I promise, I'm fine. Look, I'm fine. It's just... I think we need to pull the game from shelves. We need to stop production. This is pulling. If you're here to gloat, I haven't heard anything yet, so you can just... I read his letter. And I can't possibly imagine how he must have felt, but I can relate to it through my own experiences and I've been in the place that that letter made him sound like. And it's hard. But I promise that if his friends were anything like my own, they tried to make him see the light. It wasn't the game, was it? It's difficult being a parent, Mrs. Bullane. I have three kids of my own, trust me, I know. I wouldn't have understood all of this before everything that happened, but trust me when I say that he wasn't alone. 
He found a family in the game. He was loved. It's not a bad game, Mrs. Pauline, and you're not a bad mother. It's just sometimes the dice rolls aren't in our favor. And we need to learn from those moments. And let them better us. Survivors have now made their way to safety. All except for that young girl who stands at the end of the bridge waiting for the three of you. The tide of foes is oncoming as the three of you make your way across the bridge. Damien, because you're at the rear of the group, you take most of the attacks against your back. What do you do? You stop at the midpoint, raising your shield. Looking back, you see your friends have made their way across. Yes, the, the orcs will get across. She's still watching, yes. It'll be fine. Yes. Are, are you sure you want to do this? You raise your sword high. Blades clanging across your shield, sinking into your skin, keeping this horde of monsters at bay. Away from the survivors, away from that young girl, taking on all attacks, all the late night fights, all the lies, everyone who'd rather see you dead. And you smile. And you bring your sword down, cutting the bridge in half. And you fall. At your own sacrifice, you fall, saving the survivors, your friends, you fall into the ravine below. And that's where we'll pick up next session.